Have you ever wondered if we're alone in this universe? Peering out into the massive sky and wondering if there's anyone or anything on the other side. The Fermi Paradox explores this dilemma and poses the question, given the trillions and trillions of galaxies out there, we can't be the only ones, right? But what if we're not looking in all the right places? What if some of the answers to our most puzzling questions are right here, under our noses? Today, we're going to explore the mystery of inner terrestrials, not the British punk band, but rather the alien life forms that are dwelling amongst us, right here, on our planet. A world within our world that may just help us prove life out there is possible and that life here is more strange and connected than we could ever imagine. Some of Earth's most fascinating animals are completely invisible to the naked eye. Meet extremophiles, animals that thrive under extreme conditions. Extremophiles come in many different forms, most often microorganisms like bacteria and archaea, but that doesn't make them insignificant. Microorganisms play vital roles in balancing global ecosystems, including breaking down organic matter and helping to produce oxygen. Not to mention, it's believed that all species evolved from single-cell organisms once upon a time. It's foundational to all existing life. There are several types of extremophiles, including thermophiles that survive in very hot temperatures between 41 and 70 degrees Celsius. They're typically found in hydrothermal vents and volcanic regions. Psychrophiles survive very cold temperatures, typically below 15 degrees Celsius, and can be found in areas like glaciers and deep ocean waters. And there's even radio-resistant extremophiles that thrive in areas containing dangerous amounts of ionizing radiation. Scientists discovered over 200 species of radio-resistant fungi near the Chernobyl nuclear site in Ukraine. These fungi were growing in abundance, using the radiation as a source of energy. Extremophiles on Earth offer clues as to if and how life could exist outside of our planet. If life can flourish here under these intense conditions, there's a possibility that they could survive on other planets with similar universal properties. A team of international scientists recently conducted a study simulating Mars-like conditions in a lab, including high radiation, low temperatures, and zero oxygen, to test the viability of various bacterial strains. Not only did the bacteria in the study survive, but some even multiplied. Now, of course, simulating Martian conditions in a lab is not a one-to-one -one comparison to outer space, but the results are really promising and keep scientists hopeful that we may uncover similar bacterial strains through current and future missions. NASA's Perseverance rover is currently studying the Jezero crater on Mars, believed to once have been a liquid lake. Any remnants of fossils or bacteria could suggest that life existed here once upon a time. In another study, different strains of bacteria were discovered on the outer surface of the International Space Station. It's unknown if these microbes came from Earth and traveled to space through something like accidental contamination, or if they originated in space. Either way, these microorganisms survived on the surface of the ISS for years while it was in orbit. Panspermia is a theory that suggests the compounds of life are spread out throughout the universe and are distributed to and from different planets and galaxies. Birds unknowingly spread seeds as they eat various fruits, leading to the growth of these fruits in new areas they wouldn't have otherwise existed. Panspermia follows a similar concept, except instead of birds, it's space stuff like asteroids and comets, and instead of seeds, they're chemicals and compounds that get carried throughout the galaxies. Some scientists believe panspermia introduced either bacteria, organic molecules, or amino acids containing chemicals like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to Earth billions of years ago, eventually kickstarting the process of evolution. As we discussed earlier, all life we know today can be traced back to single-cell organisms that adapted over millions and millions of years through reproduction, genetic mutations, and natural selection. Evolution didn't only happen because of Earth's perfect conditions, but in spite of it. What's to say something similar can't happen on another planet? It's hard to envision what a developed organism would look like on a planet like Mars because of its harsh conditions relative to Earth. 
But that doesn't mean that bacteria in space can't go through its own evolutionary process under its own conditions. Maybe they're just a few millennia behind. Or maybe it's already happened and we just don't have the technology to discover it. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that our home planet has shown that life can thrive in even the most inhospitable places. And once you have the foundation for life, the rest is history. Alright, we've covered the surface, now let's explore even deeper. Imagine living your life with the weight of 50 jets pushing down on you at all times. That's the reality of some of the most fascinating creatures of the deep sea, adapted to thrive in the most extreme conditions on the planet. Picture dark, freezing waters with a pressure so intense it could crush almost anything instantly. It's not surprising that the animals down here look absolutely horrifying. To better understand just how big our oceans are, let's break some numbers down. Earth's surface is 71% water, with 97% of it found in oceans. Oceans dominate the planet's surface, spanning across nearly 140 million square miles with an average depth of about 3,600 meters. But the ocean can go even deeper in some areas due to its uneven topography, plunging into thousands of underwater mountains, valleys, and trenches. The Mariana Trench is home to the deepest natural point on Earth, called the Challenger Deep, that runs 11,000 meters below sea level. Here, you could sink all the highest points on Earth, including Mount Everest, Mount Chimborazo, and not one, not even five, but 13 Burj Khalifas, and still have room left over. And the ocean isn't just a giant homogenous pool, it has layers, with each layer containing very different living conditions and species. The first layer is called the epipelagic zone, also known as the sunlight zone since the sun is still able to penetrate the ocean's surface about 200 meters deep. Although the epipelagic zone contains about 90% of all ocean life, it only makes up about 5% of the ocean's depth. Sort of like the crowded city of a lesser explored ocean down below. Beneath the epipelagic zone lies the mesopelagic zone, also known as the twilight zone, appropriately named after the vampire squid that reside in these waters. I'm just kidding, obviously, it's just dark. But the twilight zone is full of diverse marine life, like squid, jellyfish, and eels. The twilight zone also welcomes visitors from the sunlight zone, like whales and dolphins, that will occasionally dive deeper to hunt and migrate in between seasons. Even more impressive, though, is what lurks even deeper, the bathypelagic zone, also known as the midnight zone due to its complete darkness. The midnight zone is located between 1,000 and 3,000 meters below sea level, with a pressure of 5,800 pounds per square inch and waters remaining at cool 4 degrees Celsius. Despite the higher pressure, freezing temperatures, and lack of sunlight, once again, life continues to persevere through specialized adaptations like bioluminescence, chemotrophy, and unique exoskeletons that can withstand the crushing pressure. You would look pretty strange too if you had to live under these hostile conditions. Did you know that the Midnight Zone is home to a fish with feet? That's right, the sea toad's fins have evolved into little tiny feet that allow it to walk across the ocean floor in search of food. And of course, there's the anglerfish that has a built-in fishing rod sticking out of its head. But it doesn't even stop there. The bisopelagic zone is located 6,000 meters deep and the hadopelagic zone an unbelievable 11,000 meters below sea level. And yes, there is life teeming in both of these zones, including tiny crustaceans, snailfish, sea cucumbers, and whatever the hell this thing is. More than 80% of the ocean remains unmapped, and it's estimated that about 91% of ocean species still remain unclassified. When you consider that more people have been to the moon than to the bottom of the ocean, it really puts into perspective just how out of reach it is despite its proximity. New species of aquatic life are being discovered every single year. And don't get me started on urban legends like mermaids, the megalodon, or the kraken, a horrifying squid believed to be a mile long. Gigantism is a very real phenomenon caused by factors like the cold water temperatures and food scarcity, so the kraken could theoretically be based on a real animal. What's more frightening is that cephalopods, the class of animals that include squid, octopus, and cuttlefish, are one of the most intelligent marine creatures ever studied. So not only can they withstand extreme living conditions and grow incredibly large, they're also highly intelligent. 
If that doesn't freak you out, I don't know what will. Maybe the fact that oceans don't only exist on Earth. Numerous rover missions have found evidence for oceans and exoplanets and moons across our galaxy. In 2014 and 2016, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope captured images of water plumes erupting from Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons. This indicates the likely presence of liquid water beneath Europa's icy surface. In 2015, NASA's Cassini spacecraft discovered hydrogen molecules in the plumes emerging from Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, also pointing to a possible subterranean ocean miles beneath its icy crust. Other celestial bodies in our solar system, such as Ganymede and Titan, are also believed to contain liquid water. Now, this doesn't automatically mean that there are sea creatures hanging out in outer space, but there's a possibility that these undiscovered oceans may be harboring life beyond our current reach. All right, friends, we've officially covered the surface and explored some of the deep blue sea. We have just one more stop to go beneath the ocean and into the hidden world of the Earth's crust. Think of Earth as a massive egg with different layers safeguarding a central core, much like an egg yolk. Earth's crust is kind of like the eggshell. It's about 45 miles thick, which might sound like a lot, but this only makes up about 1% of the planet's total volume. It's extremely thin compared to the other layers, but the crazy part is we've barely scratched its surface. The Kola Super Deep Borehole is the deepest man-made point on Earth, reaching a depth of about 7.6 miles. That's as deep as we've ever been able to go. 7.6 miles of the 45 miles of crust. You could drive this distance in under 15 minutes. The incredibly high pressures, blistering heat, and thick rock located deep in the crust makes it virtually impossible to dig through, so we unfortunately haven't been able to do much physical exploration. Dr. Ulrich Harms, one of the scientists that worked at the Kola Super Deep Borehole site, recalls uncovering some unexpected things during the 20-year drilling project, like microscopic fossils dating back 2 billion years, and perhaps the most perplexing, a lot of liquid water found miles beneath the surface. This discovery had scientists theorizing that the crust is not just a dense layer of compact rock, rather it contains pathways and cracks that allow water to flow through it. And where there's water, there's typically life. The size and contents of these pathways are unknown, but if I had to guess, I would probably say, I don't know, hidden spaceships, or the lost kingdom of Agartha. I'm only partly kidding, but it's hard not to wonder. Almost every ancient civilization, from the Mayans, to ancient Greeks, to Hindu mythology, tell similar stories of hidden, underground cities. Why do we see this recurring theme throughout history all over the world? What did they know that we don't? There are theories that certain cave systems go deeper than we've ever been able to explore, or that there are concealed entrances in the poles leading to secret underground civilizations, perhaps even alien societies. Science fiction aside though, the Earth's crust is actually very active. The Deep Carbon Observatory, a global network of 1,200 scientists from 55 countries, led a fascinating 10-year project that included analyzing the deep biosphere, a hidden ecosystem located miles beneath the surface. For a decade, geologists, chemists, and other researchers from various fields carried out numerous studies to better understand Earth's global carbon cycle. Carbon is one of the building blocks of all life, so this research would help us better understand how life came to be on our planet and possibly other planets. Scientists collected samples from various mines and boreholes all over the world, some spanning over three miles deep. And guess what they found? A lot of bacteria. Billions upon billions of carbon matter and microorganisms that are thriving in the deep biosphere. In fact, they estimated that 70% of all Earth's bacteria and archaea isn't located on the surface, but actually within Earth's crust. We know from past space studies that carbon is abundant on other planets like Mars, which is thought to have been habitable billions of years ago. Many members of the DCO, including former NASA scientists, believe that life may have actually originated from Mars and came to Earth through panspermia. One theory is that Martian meteorites crashed onto our planet from outer space, bringing some of the necessary ingredients needed to produce life, including a lot of carbon, 
the backbone of all organic molecules and the stuff that we're made out of. So in the end, in a weird way, we might actually be the aliens all along. Just a mess of chemistry and biology emerging from a once chaotic pre-mortal soup. As always, thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun putting this video together and I really hope that you enjoyed. If you have any thoughts or comments, please let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.